Brava is the first and only roller coaster located inside an art museum. Located at the Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art, this rideable attraction is the focal point of artist E.J. Hill's Break Run Helix exhibit. Just don't expect to show up without a reservation and ride it though. In this video, I will explain just how you ride it and review the experience itself. The Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art, or Mass MoCA, opened in 1999. It is one of the largest museums in the world for contemporary art. The complex is located in a former factory building, and it's located in North Adams. If you're unfamiliar with this town, as I was even as a native Bay Stater, it is located in the northwest corner of Massachusetts in the Berkshire Mountains. Or if you're using amusement parks as points of reference, this museum is one and a half hours from either Six Flags New England or The Great Escape. Then you have two mountain coasters a half hour away, including Thunderbolt at Berkshire East Resort. That is one of the best installations out there. But back to Brava. Break Run Helix is from the creative mind of E.J. Hill, an artist who also happens to be a coaster enthusiast. The exhibit will run from November 2022 through January 2024. It includes paintings, wooden structures resembling roller coasters, and most impressively, a rideable coaster in Brava. This ride was supplied by Skyline Attractions. The coaster uses the same track as their new Spaghetti Bowl coasters. It is weld free and super smooth, but it is classified differently because it uses different supports, mechanics, and trains. This is a hybrid coaster. It has pink steel track and simplistic wooden supports. The latter fit in with the aesthetic of the rest of the exhibit. The Paschetti Bowl coasters usually will have all steel supports. Brava also features a single-person car that weighs just 500 pounds. Compare that to the Paschetti Bowl coasters that'll have longer trains seating riders side by side. Brava is also operated much differently. You board the coaster on the third floor of the museum. An employee then pushes the train over the first drop. The rest of the layout takes place in the second floor. Riders won't experience a full circuit though. You don't have enough momentum at the end to make it back up to the third floor, so you rock to a stop at the bottom. After the rider is disembarked, the employees winch the train back up to the top for the next guest. Brava can only accommodate one rider per hour, so over the course of this 15-month exhibition, roughly 1,800 riders total will get to experience this coaster. For comparison, some B&M hypers can chew through that many guests in just one hour. While it is mechanically possible for the ride to handle more people per hour, the museum and artists have made the conscious choice to limit riders. This is for a few reasons. 1. E.J. Hill wants each coaster ride to be special. He wants it to feel like a performance. 2. The artist wants guests to be able to walk right next to the attraction. Remember, this isn't just a coaster, it is also a piece of art. So for much of the day, the gates are open, and guests can get way closer to Brava than any other coaster out there. It feels wrong as a coaster enthusiast to be this close to a ride. It feels like you're in a restricted area. Five or so minutes after the hour, the employees will close off the area. This is so they can winch the car back up to the third floor. This process originally took 10 minutes, but the current motor and setup can pull the car atop the lift in roughly two to three minutes. Then, 10 to 15 minutes after the hour, the lone rider gets to experience their solo ride on Brava, and it will be to much fanfare. Onlookers will watch in awe, as many don't believe there's a coaster operating at a museum, and the employees encourage everyone to clap at its conclusion. Again, this is viewed as a performance. This will be an extremely exclusive coaster credit. Because of its low throughput, the coaster doesn't have a traditional queue line. You need to reserve the ride in advance, typically weeks out. Potential riders need to go to the Mass Mocha website. You need to select a specific date and time. The museum releases the schedule for Brava in month-long chunks. Mass Mocha members get first access. They swallowed up most spots in the ride's first month, but myself and several other coaster enthusiasts were able to secure spots in the second month by checking the calendar daily until we saw availability. Is it tedious? Oh yes. But persistence certainly paid off. Reservations are free. You just need to purchase museum admission for the day you visit. 
Tickets cost $20 for adults as of 2022. You can purchase these at the box office the day of, but you can expedite your entry by purchasing a time ticket in advance online. It is also worth noting riders must be at least 40 inches tall and less than 300 pounds. These two restrictions make sense. The one that shocked me was that guests need to be at least 15 years old to ride. I was surprised that kids were not allowed, especially given the scale and intensity of this coaster. But that may be due to the single rider nature of the coaster. A lot of coasters allow kids to ride if they're with a supervising companion. Obviously, that's not possible here with just one rider total. When it's your turn to ride, you should report to the ride 15 minutes in advance of your ride time. As mentioned earlier, you board on the third floor. You are hidden behind a velvet curtain, again trying to get the idea that you're a performer. You then need to read the safety instructions under the employee's supervision. Last but not least, before hopping in the vehicle, you need to have a signed waiver. You can either complete this online when you book your time, or do it in person the day of. When you board your car, you will not find a lap bar. Instead, you just have a cushioned seat and a seatbelt. There is a static grab bar in front of you though. While there's no official max height for riders, it is worth noting the vehicles are not overly accommodating to guests with long legs. I'm 5'9", and my legs were darn close to hitting the front of the car. The attendant said some taller guests have had to ride with their legs spread sideways to fit. Once you're secured, the employees make sure the area is clear of all guests and gate it off. The employees then open the gate at the top and remove the safety sword keeping your car in place. You are then pushed over the edge and down the drop. It is just 12 feet or 3.5 meters tall. That is on par with most kiddie coasters, but this drop has a bit more going for it. 1. You have a little speed into it thanks to the push. 2. It is a shockingly steep drop for a ride of this size. It is more reminiscent of a sharp plunge on a log flume than your usual coaster. No airtime to be had, but the drop does have some zip to it. Now the rise advertises having a max speed of 30 miles per hour or 48 kilometers per hour. I call BS. That figure seems nearly impossible at the ride's posted height, but whatever. You then head up a sizable hill, by this ride's standards at least, and navigate a helix. Riders can pose towards the spectators at the apex. Then you undulate as you spiral back down to the ground. It is a pretty tame helix, but that's not too surprising given the ride scale. You then head towards a very steep hill that leads back to the third floor, but you only make it about halfway up the hill. You stall out, and this moment induces some weightlessness. It is probably the best spot on the ride for forces or sensations. You then roll backwards over a brake pad that takes away a good chunk of your speed. You then make it partway up the helix. Due to the banking and lack of speed, you're going to get some lateral hang time here. I honestly think the helix is more exciting at this point than it was on the initial pass. You then head over the brake pad, losing even more speed. You make it maybe a foot up the final hill, roll over the brake pad one last time, and come to a stop. Employees then encourage the rider and all the spectators to clap because your performance is over. You are then let off the ride, ending the experience. The ride only has 260 feet or 79 meters of track, but it feels quite a bit longer due to the multi-pass section at the end. This is a new track design from Skyline, so there were some questions how smoothly it would ride, especially after the roughness issues in their Skywarp models. Fortunately, this ride is exceptionally smooth. It feels like an RMC iBox coaster. The weld-free track really works wonders here. So what would I rate Brava? The coaster itself is probably a 6 out of 10. It's a decent ride, especially considering how little track it contains. This definitely is a step up for most kiddie coasters. That initial drop has more power to it, and the shuttle bit towards the end adds some extra thrills, and it is extremely comfortable for riders. But I can't rate the coaster itself any higher. Most family coasters offer a more complete ride. But there are three additional aspects where this ride deserves a claim. One, it's a piece of art. It is the focal point of a full-fledged exhibit. You have some additional wood structures and paintings making up the entirety of it. 
Those should not be missed as well if you're already there. Two, it was an outside-the-box location for a coaster, and it may encourage other non-conventional locations into adding one in the future. Three, it serves as a great proof of concept for the new track Skyline Attractions offers. With how smooth it rides, I am excited to see this track on the Paschetti Bowl coasters. It should be a game changer for the kiddie and junior coaster industry. So do I recommend going out to experience Brava? If you're in the area, sure. It is a rare credit, and it doesn't ride like any other coaster out there currently. However, I would not make a super long trek just for this attraction alone. But if you're a big art fan, I would check this place out. My fiancé and I are admittedly not the biggest art fans, but Mass Mocha is beloved by fans of contemporary art. So if you are more artsy than us, definitely check this place out. Art fans could easily spend an entire day here at Mass Mocha with how expansive the museum is. It spans multiple buildings. It is worth noting there are several art experiences that are unique and need to be booked in advance. Most can be booked a day out, but because of Brava's capacity being so low, that one will likely need to be booked weeks in advance. Just keep checking if your heart's set on riding it. If you're a coaster enthusiast more than an art fan, I would try to pair this place with the area's mountain coasters, or one of the nearby Six Flags parks. Again, you're just one and a half hours away from Six Flags New England, or the Great Escape. The final thing I want to touch on is the coaster's plans once the exhibition concludes in January 2024. The employee said the owner wants Brava to live on, specifically in a rideable form. They said the track is designed for much greater use than it will ever get at Mass Mocha. It can not only accommodate more cycles per hour, but it can support a four-car train. So not sure if it will find its way to another park or some sort of museum, but until then, you have just over a year to get out to Western Massachusetts to experience this rare ride in its current home. So those are my thoughts on Brava, the world's only coaster in an art museum. What are your thoughts on this unique coaster? Do you plan to get out to ride it? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.